Okay, so we're now going to continue with one of our first real physical, practical, creative activities that we're going to do in the challenge this week. So basically what we want to do is, it's a really simple idea of creating bunting. Now we're going to create two types. Hannah, would you hold that M for me there? This is just a really simple paper version. And you can basically make all, and I'm, I'm using a diamond shape. You can use any shape you want. You can use a semicircle, you can use different shaped rectangles, you can mix it up and have loads of different shapes on it. But fundamentally what you're doing is, you're creating a fold over, because the advantage of this is that you can write on the back as well. So that you can use one side and then you can turn it over and use the other side then for another activity or another way of exploring it. There's another way we can do, we're gonna show you to make reveals. But the idea being that when you put up your bunting, this is just a basic plain white paper. Now, again, you can use a lar much larger sizes, so the diamonds can be much, much bigger. So use maybe an A3 page or even an A1 page if you wanted, and make that diamond shape. We're keeping it nice and simple just for demonstration purposes today. Now, again, think about doing this activity with a four or five year old where they're maybe colouring something in versus doing this activity maybe with a 16 or a 17 year old who's really creative and artistic and that they might want to draw on the pages and then cut them out and then create their... So, for example, I know there are students in my school that are brilliant drawing facial expressions. Now, they might, we might pick six or seven facial expressions and they might draw different faces on each of these bunting shapes to demonstrate what that expression looks like. A student who's really into music might decide to do loads of different musical notes or musical styles or lyrics from songs that they really like, they might put up on it. If it was a student who's maybe really good doing um, collages, they might loads of magazines and they cut up loads of, or tear up loads of pieces of magazines and create collages on each one of these. What they are are just little micro representations of the idea or the concept or the skill, but also it's physical because they're actually getting in. It's not all academic and reading, it's the physical act of, of being able to put these together. So we're going to show you two different types here now. Um, the first one is just using a basic template. Now all I've done here is taken a very simple diamond shape and all I'm doing with the diamond shape is I just printed it onto an A4 page. Now, if you wanted, I've just taken a flip chart page here and I've cut the flip chart page in half. You can do a much larger version of it as well if you wanted. Now, if you haven't drawn the, di the diamond, the easiest way to do it is if you just fold your page in half, the folded line across the top, that's what's going to sit on the string. Okay? So, depending on how wide you want your diamond to be, I'm going to make the diamond, let's say, the full width of this for this one. And all you're going to do is, you're going to, the centre point here is the end of your diamond. So you're going to fold the paper so that the centre point and the edge point meet. So you can see what I've done there. And on the other side, I fold the paper so the centre point and the end point meet. So you can see what I've done there. Now, all I'm going to do then is cut along that fold line. Now, if I wanted my diamonds to be more narrow, I can move that line, and I'll show you exactly how to do that now. So what I've got there now is my diamond shape, and I'm, but if I wanted that diamond shape to be less wide across the top here. All I'm doing is again folding it a little bit on either side to make it work. But they all absolutely do not need to be the same size. So you might decide to have loads of different shapes. So you might, let's say if you have a whole group of people on your program, we're all different. So your bunting doesn't need to be the same. It doesn't need to be uniform. Now I'm one of those people that would want it absolutely uniform and I would want all of them exactly the same shape or size. So again, in this situation, your bunting is going to be maybe much bigger 
than it would be in this situation. But if there's no there's any size you want really. You can use that pages, you can use maybe old wallpaper, you can use any paper that you have, you can use newspaper if you wanted and stick layers of newspaper together. You might even use newspaper and take clippings of words, again to make a collage. We want to be as sustainable as we can with the materials that we're using. So try and reuse materials that you have lying around at home or materials that maybe you're not using anymore that can help you make up the more interesting bunting. So we have that basic diamond shape. Sorry, I took that scissors from you. And what we're going to do then is you have to decide on different ways that you might use that bunting. Now, so once we've got the bunting together, what we're going to do is all we're going to do, there's a number of ways of doing this. The quickest and easiest way is to just take the diamond and the string, and I'm going to just move those along. And that's another thing if you want, if you want them to overlap, you can just push them a little bit closer together. But the key is that you don't glue them the whole way along the top. So all we're going to do is take the diamond shape like we have here, I'll just lie that down again there, Hannah, and fold the diamond shape in half. And what we want to do is to place it on the string, just like this, and then all we're going to do is place a small amount of glue in the bottom corner, just at the point of the diamond and then stick that together and what that does it allows you to move the diamond shape along and you're not going to be stuck to the to the string itself and it gives you a lot more so you can see the bunting looking like that compared to if you want to move it much, much further apart but also it can be a really interesting way of you know for example if you were really into English and writing you might put, pick a whole load of keywords or words you love from your favourite um, um, book. So let's say it was Harry Potter and you were picking all the characters from Harry Potter and you might put the different words up, all their names up and then start telling a story. You might be really interested in something like Pikachu or trains or Lego and then you use this as a way of expressing your special interest. But also teaching other people in your group about the thing that you're most interested in. So doing a bunting of your special interest is a great way of not only helping other people understand what you're really interested in and what you really like, but also a way of you to really, um, I know when, I, when I'm looking at the things I really enjoy doing, it helps me calm down. It helps me feel a lot more relaxed because I'm doing something that I really enjoy and I really feel safe talking about and discussing with other people and that means that it's easier. So this is a lovely activity that allows you to kind of stretch that a little bit further. Now Anna's going to do one and Hannah are going to do two now very quickly and we'll have a look at them doing this. So Hannah's uh, activity she's going to do here, we've actually just written questions on the bunting sheets. So what are the different questions there Hannah? So we have, I like to, I don't like when, my favourite activity is, and it helps me when. And what's nice about this, I was just thinking about that Billy was talking about how the bunting can be used as kind of self-expression um, of, of a special interest. It can also be used as expression of self. I was looking at these and thinking, God, that's lovely in place of like a fact file that you might fill in about yourself. You can just have 10 um, diamonds, 10 triangles of bunting, and just put something up about yourself on each one. It's a, it's a totally different way of, of, of doing that than what, um, you know, you, you might be used to, which is nice. And even having something, you can design the questions. If you wanted to put together questions, so let's say you wanted to explore that. Now Hannah's going to write on those now, and she's going to stick those together and use some string. Um, but you might come up with the questions yourself that you might put on that. Think about somebody joining secondary school for the first time. What kinds of things, if you were to put five or six questions on a bunting for everybody, I'm thinking I'd love to do this with my first years coming into my school in September, is to have five maybe different buntings, five different uh, triangles, put ev get everyone to actually fill in their own and for us to cover the entire wall with rows and rows of bunting and then actually to be able to notice what other people like the same thing that I like. So going around and maybe finding another person who likes Lego or another person who likes video games 
or another person who likes watching a particular television program or playing football or playing hurling or whatever particular area of interest that they have. And when you actually fill them in then, again, you're writing them. You might decide to add a little bit of embellishment on them. The one that Anne is making at the moment, Anne is making a weekly one. And this can be a really nice one for the Summer Challenge program because what you're doing is you're using it as a way of maybe reflecting at the end of the day. So you take out your bunting and what you do is you fill in on the bunting maybe the key learning from that day, a memory from that day, something you really enjoyed on that day. Um, and you can design them up, you can colour them up, you can put three dimensional pieces on them. You can, and again, for those running the programme, you know, a trip to your local um, kind of discount store. Um, I know uh, in, in my area we tend to use deals and places like that a lot because we get really, really good value for a small amount of money. We can buy loads of bags of like pom poms or googly eyes or great ones. We were looking at them yesterday. Um, but again, ways of building up really, really simple bunting but allowing it to use it as a form of self-expression, while at the same time it's a kinesthetic activity, people are up and on their feet and moving. It's also a creative expression, so again, the more creative you are, maybe a little competition among the group, we might have a little competition here between Hannah and Anne, who creates the most creative um, <laughs> bunting in the shortest amount of time. Primary school, really? I know, well, Home economics teacher, primary school, it's a, you know, it's a fair battle. It's a fair battle. I have to own, I'm a home economics teacher as well, so I'm on this side of the table. So what we're doing there, Anne at the moment is she's just making up, I'll give a, show an example of one. So, oh. So again. So again, again, just making up the shape. Maybe using a little stamp, that's just a little ink stamp that Anne uses, this one here. And you can buy loads of these, but you can make your own using potato prints and poster paint. Um, you can use sponges, cut out the shape in a sponge and use paint on it as well. You can layer it up. You might cut out an image from a magazine or a newspaper that you like the look of. You might print something off the internet, some uh, kind of an image you like of your special area of interest. You might use stickers. There's loads of different ways of actually doing it. But again, the more creative you are, the better your bunting is going to be. And we really want to see your work. So when you make these up, please make sure you take a photograph of them, put them up on social media, make sure you put in the hashtag Aviva Summer Challenge and As I Am, because we really want to see all your work. And we really want to get people as involved in this creative expression as they possibly can. And these are a really simple paper form of the bunting. The more um, kind of longer term version of it, and they're great to make, and Anne's going to do some now with fabric, um, where you can make them for Christmas, you can make them for special events. Bunting is great for birthday celebration. You can make these small triangles up and write happy birthday Billy or happy birthday whoever you can, you know, welcome home, welcome back to school, we miss you, happy Mother's Day, happy best brother day, whatever. But they're really quick and easy ways of making a lovely um, visual display for a room or for a celebration or for a party. But also they're actually a great way of keeping and using old wrapping paper. So actually wrapping paper from gifts or from packages you might have got. It's a great way of keeping all of that old paper together, cutting it up and then using it to make different forms of bunting. They're getting a little bit more challenging here now. I can see Hannah looking at Anna's work. Anne's work and seeing what is Anne doing. Hannah's getting a bit more creative there now with the old print stick. Get a little bit more involved. We like a little bit of competition. Um, we have to get the old... Um, yeah. You could actually make this a timed activity if you want to have a bit of fun with it. So how, what's the most creative banner piece you can make in five or ten minutes? And that's a really interesting way of building time and time management and executive functioning skills into activity. So you might give everyone in the group one triangle and say we're going to give you now ten minutes to make the most creative triangle you can to represent a physical activity you like. 
a creative expression, your favourite television programme. And you make it timed. And the time nature of it means that people work a bit harder, are a little bit more focused, get a little... But also what you're doing is, do you remember we said before about building up that little bit of internal anxiety? That little bit of, oh, the bell's going to go, or I've only got 10 or 15 minutes to do. How do I feel when I'm put under a little bit of time pressure? And use that as a way of exploring with the young person. When you're under pressure in class, and the teacher has given an activity, and they've said you've got 10 or 15 minutes to do that activity, but you're not getting it done in that time frame. Well, what would you do? Use that as a moment to discuss with the young person where they feel comfortable as saying, well, actually, I didn't get it all finished. I wasn't able to get that work completed. I got half of it done. And you plan a narrative. You plan the script with the young person so that you're starting to explore where they might feel anxious and how you might move them forward. Now, I notice here Anna's taken the glue stick. And <laughs> Anna is impatiently waiting for the glue stick. If we had two, it would be useful. Well, I, I, I wonder who was organising and in charge of glue sticks. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> the back is free, so they can write their own thing down on the back. Yeah. So now we'll have a look. Now again, I don't want to say these are very basic, <laughs> but they're done very quickly. And do you want to come around this side so we can show off the weekly one? So again, now you might decide, again, just this is a really simple representation of the week. So you might decide that at the end of every day, write one thing on your bunting that you got from today. One thing maybe, go back to the remember, this is our summer challenge. You might say, what one thing did I learn the most from today? What one thing did I get the most fun from today? Now you might actually be able to turn it around and say, yeah. what was the, the part of today I found most difficult? But we're acknowledging it, but we're not focusing on it. We're focusing on the piece that you found most enjoyable, or you got the most from. And again, you might decide if you're doing a two-week program, to build that in over the two weeks. You might do morning and afternoon. So you decide how you want to break it down. There's absolutely no problem at all. Um, Hannah now, do you want to come around yes, this side? Sure. I hope it all stays on. Okay. Now again, remember this was an information one. It was very much around answering some questions. This is a really, really nice activity to do around sharing areas of interest, special interest, getting to know me, communication skills, maybe my favourite subject. You might even do one across three or four different subjects. Because um, some people really lo love things like maths or English or languages. So if let's say you really enjoyed languages or you were particularly interested, I remember having a conversation with a student recently who really, really interested in um, Japanese culture and Korean culture. So it might be putting down a phrase of how to say something or you might do it in Irish. But so here, Hannah, I like to sing, so we might get some singing from Hannah before the end of our 10 hours. My favourite activity is, again, playing music. What instruments do you play? I play clarinet, piano and guitar. Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> I play nothing. <laughs> I don't like it when too many things are asked to be at once. That might be a little nod, nod towards uh, us giving our notes to do today. And it helps me when I know what we're doing before we do it. Again, that was definitely directional by what we're doing today. But again, the whole idea behind this bunting is it's a really, really simple way of doing a physical activity that's creative and allows loads of flexibility. But don't get limited in the size of the bunting. Be as open and, and explore as much of different ways that you might be able to do that. Now we're going to do a little bit more about that, but using fabric, which is a little bit more technical, and Anne's going to go through that with you now in a second. <laughs>